Every now and again I put out a video featuring a few unusual recordings I've collected over the previous months. Well, this video is going to be the third in that series, and in this one I'll be featuring the latest release on digital compact cassette, a reel of tape from Fox Television Studios, and an EP that I had a very small part in creating. I'll start off with the digital compact cassette. Now this has been put together by the DCC Museum, who you may be aware last year also issued the first new DCC release in 21 years. This was sent to me back in June, but I've been waiting for the right opportunity to show it in a video. Now they do an outstanding job with these, it's like stepping back in time to the 1990s when you take the shrink wrap off one. I know I've mentioned before how much I like DCC's packaging and how well it all fits together, but now that I've had more time to think about it, I've got to say that out of all the pre-recorded formats I've held in my hands, DCC is the most pleasing to me it's just so well thought out now if you wish you can scan that qr code which will take you to the website and i see here at the top that this title was produced by jeremy hyden who also of course was the artist on that 2017 dcc release and the whole thing wouldn't have been possible without the resources of ralph who runs a dcc museum funnily enough even I get a mention in this booklet, my 2014 video about DCC gets credited with igniting Ralph's interest in the format. That's very generous of him to put that, but me making a video about DCC is easy. Putting out a new release on the format is really taking things to another level. On top of the usual insert, there's also another booklet in here that contains the lyrics as well as some additional information. Apparently this album was originally released in the year 2000. Now I've got to applaud the work that's been done on putting this together, it's just a beautiful set done to the highest quality and DCC always have the cover art sheet that can be removed from the case and in some cases this also contains extra information and I'm glad to see that it does here. I always like the way that the artwork on the cassette is in full colour and it's recessed under this clear sheet. That's a big upgrade from a, a standard cassette. It's just a shame to me that DCC died off as I think I'd still enjoy collecting these. Anyway, let's have a quick listen. conscious of avoiding the auto content match on YouTube, but if you want, you can listen to a full six minute sampler from the album via the link in the video description text box. I'd also like to mention that the DCC Museum are putting together a documentary all about digital compact cassette, and you may even spot the odd familiar face in the trailer for it. Yeah, look at me, I'm fit the big time, I'm in a movie now and everything. Well, a documentary anyway. I answered a few questions for it and sent them off. I'm interested to see how it's all integrated together, but I'm more intrigued about the behind the scenes story from Digital Compact Cassette, the creation of it by the people who were there at the time. So there's a Kickstarter campaign for that. There's a link to that in the video description text box, or you could just search for DCC on Kickstarter. I think that'll take you there. Right next is this EP called Relative Suffering from a group called School Drugs. I'm doing my best John Peel impression there. Again, they've done a great job here with the packaging. I really think these artists are beginning to understand that if somebody buys a physical copy of a music title, then it's because they appreciate the whole experience of holding something in their hands, perhaps reading a booklet, getting extra information, even a lyric sheet. This one looks like it's been badly photocopied, but it's all part of the design. It even comes with a download code in this release, as well as some stickers. Now, mine also has a handwritten thank you note in it, which is very nice of them. The reason for this is, well, you may remember the video I did about the Omni Entertainment System. In that video, I played a Jeopardy cartridge that had a few odd questions on it. Now, after watching that video, a member of the group asked if I'd send him a high-quality recording of that tape, and he wanted to use that on a record, so I did. And here's the disc in question. Again, it features a novel label design, and the disc is clear yellow. You can see it runs at 33 and a third RPM, so there's just over six minutes of music on each side of this. But let's pop it in the record player and have a listen. Fortunately, the audio that I recorded for them is right at the start of side A. The profession with the highest suicide rate. Number one, accountants. Two, writers. Three, physicians. I've got a 
be honest, that reminds me of the bus scene in Star Trek 4, but if you want to hear more of that, you can stream it online via the link in the video description text box, and you can also purchase that EP on digital or cassette or vinyl. Now, moving on to the last item. Unlike the other ones, this isn't a commercial release. In fact, it's pretty much the exact opposite. It's an internal recording from Fox Television Studios on quarter-inch, half-track tape that runs at 7.5 inches per second. Now, I would have expected that they'd be more likely to use DAT for something like this in 1991, but it contains a variety of musical numbers from shows and promos from that year. There are plenty of familiar names in here, but I want to start off by playing the 30-second mix of the first title on that reel. It's a promo called It's on Fox, and there's a a full two-minute version of this, but I think the 30-second one should be plenty. Fox 30. It's on Fox, yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it. No one else does what we do. I found it especially interesting to hear a high quality version of the Simpsons theme without all the sound effects laid on top of it. It made me really appreciate the musicianship in that piece of music. Here's a short clip. Now, if anyone ever asks you, Grandad, what did 1991 really sound like? You could always play them a few old CDs, but I think a more accurate representation comes from the kind of incidental tunes, the promos and themes that were used on TV. So the next two minutes of music, for me, are just about as 1991 as things got. So there you go, that's 1991 in a box. So to sum up, there are links in the video description text box to that EP from School Drugs, and the same goes to the Sergeant 606 release that's on DCC. And then there's also that DCC documentary that's on Kickstarter, and since we're doing QR codes today, I've popped one of those up on the screen for that. But I've got to point out that while I appear in the video, it's not my project, it's the work of the DCC Museum, but I am very much looking forward to seeing it sometime next year. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.